Hello and welcome to Empire of War Games. My name is Eplash and today we are going to talk about all the previously previewed Adaptor Sororitas models. We will theorize about what will be previewed next week and we will talk about the Codex release date. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing as well as checking the links down in the description below. Let's get into the video. All right, so over the past couple of months, we've been getting more and more Adeptus Sororitas previews. We have been roughly getting one new kit previewed each month. And yeah, it's been going up until next week, where I assume we will get the new Adeptus Sororitas Codex release date and one or two additional models previewed before they release. So let's talk about the models they previewed or even released that, you know, like the Palantine, for example, and then theorize a little bit why Adeptus Sororitas are so popular, why are they receiving so many new kits, and so on and so forth. So let's get into the meat of the video. All right, so the Palantine was the start of the 2021 Adeptus Sororitas releases. She got previewed somewhere around Christmas last year, and she released a month ago, together with the whole piety and paint box for the people who are lucky enough to get one. We also received points for her recently, and she's normally playable in a match of 40k. So all in all, I'd say the model is really nice. Uh, it's It really stands out for me with the fact that I actually like the face that is sculpted onto the model, because all the other Adeptus Horitas faces are <laughs> actually hideous for me, and if I was playing a full army of Adeptus Horitas, they would probably all be wearing helmets. Anyway, what else got previewed? Let's go over them in order and discuss them one by one. So first up, way back in January, we got the Paragon Warsuit. That's the big, I don't know if I would call it baby carrier because you can't see the legs like dangling like on the grain, I think. But yeah, it's supposed to be a close range beat stick with some weapons attached. And yeah, I'm assuming it's going to be some somewhat of a Toughness 5 model. And it's probably just going to be heavy infantry, I would assume. I would assume it still has the infantry keyword. All in all, the model is nice. You can attach a helmet to it. You don't have to, to run it helmetless as you see it on the screen right now. And all in all, I think it's a interesting looking model. The All the reactions I saw on Twitter were very mixed. People were not sure if they like it or not. I don't really think... The Depositoritas needed this model badly, but it's nice for them to have a cool heavy infantry or, or a bigger model. Although I think that their Pantheon engines and so on fill a similar slot. So yeah, we are already getting into the territory where Adeptosoritas are filling niches within niches, which is yeah, which which can get problematic. Now let's quickly discuss why that's the case. Adeptus Sororitas, believe it or not, are selling very, very well, according to my sources. And yeah, they are not super far behind Space Marines even. And that's insane, considering they are a model line that released just over a year ago. So that's why GW has decided to keep on pushing. They released the three waves they said they would release. And now for this year, they have already previewed five models. And they are doing it because they sell well. As simple as that. If your army sells well, you are getting more models. And that's why we are probably going to get much, much more next week in the preview. Now, do they need the model? Probably not. Does it look cool? I think it does, especially if the you know person steering this thing has a helmet on. And I think, yeah, having some melee in an Adeptus Orator's army is not that bad. The next thing on the list is the Castigator. That's basically the new Rhino chassis tank with a somewhat newly designed turret design. It looks slightly different than the Predator, and I think it looks really, really cool. Now, did the Sororitas have a lack of, you know, armored vehicles? Probably not, but it's something that the Sororitas didn't have, which is like a more or less traditional tank. They had their pipe organ rocket launcher, and they had their flame spewing transports, I guess. But yeah, this one actually, I think, finalizes and uh, completes 
the vehicle range for the adaptive Zoritas really well. I like the model. It looks very complicated and intricate to paint. Um, yeah, all in all, I think this is one of the better previews and releases for the Zoritas we've seen uh, this year. I'm, I'm a big fan of the model. And all in all, I think it complements the range really, really well. There's not much more to say here. Um, I'm very curious if they are going to bump up those rules to make the Exorcist or uh, similar obsolete. But yeah, I guess we'll have to wait for the new codex. But I, I have a strange feeling that the Exorcist will be quite a bit worse than the Castigator. But that's just me assuming. Next up, we have the Executioner of the Adeptus Sororitas. Um, yeah, that's a model that basically describes what I actually dislike about the Adeptus Sororitas range. This model just looks like a blob of cloth and the face is... Yeah, it, it, it's not to my liking, personally. Um, all in all, I think this model is also filling a niche that's required. I feel like Adeptus Sororitas are getting a little bit flooded in the HQ and Elite section with character models. And it's probably going to stop sometime soon because they have so many individual models running around that it's going to get crazy. And you have so many relics you want to give them to. So I think this is probably going to be one of the last ones unless there is any character model that is like very special like Celestine or something that is yet to release but I don't think that's the case all in all I'm not a big fan of the model generally speaking it's it's filling a niche and but I really hope that's the last individual character the Adeptus Roritas are going to get because they really have enough of them and having more troops choices and so on would be a little bit more interesting, I feel like. A little bit more helpful to the army as a whole, not just visually speaking, but also from a gameplay perspective. Now we are getting to the more current releases that were within the past month. These women are basically your melee selections and they are called sacrosants. And they are basically meant to be bodyguards for all those characters I mentioned a second ago. They seem like they will be having a 4-up and vulnerable save, all that jazz you know and love. And yeah, generally speaking, these actually do fill a niche in the Adeptus Orators army because while they have some units that are interesting in melee, the infantry side of, of, of their melee prowess is really lacking. And I feel like these are supposed to fill that somewhat. These are not going to be your damage powerhouses. At least I, I don't think so. These are going to be probably strength four or five at, at most. And these are probably going to be your models that you will be able to place on objectives in order to hold them. Th those guys are not going to be uh, troops. At least I don't see that happening. I think those are going to be elites as well. So the elite slot is going to be very flooded for the sisters. But yeah, all in all, the model looks great. I'm not sure what's going on with the shield. It looks like... Yeah, it looks like weapons are coming out of it or something. I I'm not sure myself. Uh, the Hellbard looks looks really nice. And all in all, the model looks great. And the helmet is on there and everything is it's supposed to be. I'm, I'm a big fan of the model. I hope the rules support, support the whole squad and support the army as a whole. Because yeah, that's definitely a niche that, that needed filling. And yeah, I I'm glad that the Sororitas are getting great baseline infantry melee prowess. Nice. All right. And lastly, the most recent preview was a Adeptus Oritas model with this massive banner. And I'm actually not quite sure. I've been reading the text a couple of times if this is a not unnamed model or if it's actually a named model because they named this position um, Reliquent. It's a Reliquent at Arms. But the model is known as Astrid Thurga. So it's probably going to be a named model. And it has, yeah, it's it's looking great. And it's still filling the same niche. It's more separate characters standing on their own, buffing everything that's around them. And I think that's the theme of the Adeptus Horitas. And I think it'll stay like that. And I think that makes them somewhat special and different from all the other armies. 
While you can position a lot of characters next to your troops and buff them with a lot of armies, I think Zoroitas excel at that. Now, what about the model? The banner looks great. The armor looks very similar to the Judiciar or the Judicar, or however you pronounce that, of the Indomitus box. And I think it's the same model designer. I would I would bet on that because the code and the, the whole visual design is very, very similar to that. The face and the head, I think you know my opinion on that. It's Let's just not talk about it. Put a helmet on it, in my opinion, and, you know, be done. And yeah, all in all, I, I'm not sure what, 100% sure what this character is supposed to do and offer. Um, we have a lot of leadership buffing uh, things. We have AP reduction. We have strength uh, ups. Is she going to buff toughness or do anything else? I'm very curious to see the data sheet and what she's going to bring to the table. As of now, it's kind of difficult to say what her point is and if she's actually useful. But all in all, the model looks great. And I think it's going to be fun to paint because all this stuff on a banner, as far as I could you know, deduct from the Twitter post and so on, is sculpted. So you don't need to be a godly painter to make the banner look good. You just have to be very careful with your brush and it'll it'll be looking great. And yeah, those are all the models previewed so far. It's quite a lot. On the preview page, we've seen for next week's big, I don't know, Warhammer presentation week, uh, we are seeing the Adeptus Orita symbol on top of there on the little banner things. So we can expect more stuff about them. I don't think they will dedicate a whole section of it to to the to the sisters, but I think it'll going to be a good chunk of whatever day they are going to preview the battle sisters. And with that, we have talked about all of it. Now, are the sisters of battle rightfully getting so many models compared to the Drukari, for example, who only got Lilith, and Lilith is still unavailable to like. 90% of the Drukari player base. And I think, yeah, it's it's simple. The sisters are selling well, and that's why they are getting more models. And that's a never-ending circle that's going... It's basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. I hope... I hope the craft worlds are going to get something, to be honest. And yeah, we are just going to have to wait and see if that self-fulfilling prophecy is going to go and come around again and again, like for the Space Marines, and if we are going to see five or six new Battle Sisters kit every year, or if it's going to slow down after the presentation next week. I'm curious to hear what you think about the previewed Battle Sisters models. I would like to hear if you are collecting them, what you find interesting about them, and I would like to hear what you think those new models are going to bring to the table. Do you agree with me that the Sisters of Battle have a lot of separate characters and that it should stop? Or do you prefer having a lot of separate characters with one or two squads to just buff them? Or do you think it looks visually pleasing? I'm very interested to hear with you and discuss things with you. Thanks for watching. Click all the links and subscribe. I see you in the next video. Bye bye.